Liquid Text is a PDF reader that is available for iPadOS, macOS, and Windows. We hope to see it for Android as well. The app has a complex pricing system which includes a pro version for a one-time purchase ranging from $19 to $49. The developers offer discounts for students and anyone from developing countries. I love how thoughtful they are. Bless them. Fantastic human. Hello. It's Ropsy with Paperless X. To master the use of the apps that we cover on this channel, make sure you head over to our second YouTube channel, Paperless Humans, for both free and paid courses. You can also access them on our website via Patreon. And we even have them on Udemy, if you prefer that. We will have a link to all of that in the description down below. This review is going to focus on the live unlimited version of the app on the iPad. The different versions of the app can be a bit confusing though. The pro version, the one you pay for once, gets massive updates a bit slower than the subscription versions. The first subscription option, which is Liquid Text Live, syncs across your devices, but you only get one gigabyte of storage for that. For PDF reading, that is as good as nothing considering that the next tire option has unlimited storage. Surely the developers can give more storage to the first subscription, at least 20 gigabytes. The live unlimited version has two more features than the live version that are probably more useful for professionals, I imagine. You also get priority support, but the most important feature is the unlimited storage for your sync and backup. Liquid Text is not your typical PDF reader that opens multiple documents in disconnected tabs like you'd find in most apps. It is a specialized PDF reader that creates projects with several PDFs for parallel study and comparison. Whether you're bringing in a Word document, PowerPoint presentation, web page, or image, the app converts all of them to PDF before you can start working on them. You can even import documents from reference management apps, which is Zotero, Mendeley, and iManage. As far as importing different kinds of documents to your projects in Liquid Text, the app's got you covered. It's even easy to do this from within the app, so you don't have to keep going back to the home page, which will save you a lot of time. The user interface in Liquid Text can be minimalist if you prefer that. The top toolbar is anchored there and you can't move it to the bottom. You then have two sidebars, one for your documents and the other for taking notes in your project. You can maximize or minimize both sidebars depending on what you're doing. I always find myself switching between the two because the maximized one is better for navigating through documents and notes but then when you're not using them, they feel like they take up too much space. Liquid Text can arrange your documents and notes side by side or one on top of the other. Each section is resizable, which gives you control over how you work in the app. If you don't like the status bar, you can turn it off, but then you'll lose track of your time and battery level. Left hand mode switches your canvas and documents, which is great. And we hope to have that for the main toolbar too, where it can move to the bottom of the screen. The app doesn't have the most modern looking user interface, but the way its icons are spaced out makes it look quite decent and somewhat minimalist. Text annotations let you comment, highlight, bookmark, and tag your PDFs in Liquid Text. Using each of these tools gives you options to play around with their colors from a decent collection of presets. The app doesn't let you use custom colors though, so you might feel a bit limited in Liquid Text. Just curious though, how many of you guys use custom colors in PDF readers? Personally, I've never needed them. Comments in Liquid Text are not your usual ones that get tucked away once you've added them, leaving a comment icon in your document. The ones in the app stick to the edge of your PDF, out of the way but still visible, and it works great. 
I like that because there's no need to bring them up each time I need to read them. They stick like they have some sort of adhesive. Perfectly on the edge, not covering your documents and not getting in the way. Another reason to love comments in liquid text is that you can color code them using the same presets you have for other annotation tools. Only with comments you can choose to make the color subtle or stand out. And where most PDF readers give you simple comments, in liquid text they can be sophisticated. You can add titles and headings, format the text and even change font size and color. The only thing missing is probably font options, but with all of that, what are the chances you want to change the font as well? If you're using liquid text, do let us know if you'd want font type options for your comments. You can pinch your text annotations together to bring all your highlights, comments, and tags closer into a small view. This helps you find information faster without scrolling through all the pages in your PDF. We haven't seen that anywhere else. The notes canvas in liquid text is called a workspace. What sets the app apart as a unique PDF reader is its infinite writing canvas. You can customize it to make it look how you want and even the border between the small individual pages that make up the big canvas. You can handwrite your notes on the canvas, which keeps expanding in whichever direction you write. Left to right, top to bottom expansion, but I have written beyond these limitations and the app didn't glitch. Remember those comments that stick to your PDF? You can move them onto the canvas if you don't want them hanging around your PDF. Which look do you prefer? The comments stuck on the edge or sitting freely on the canvas? You can also add text boxes to your canvas. The type notes probably make more sense if you have a keyboard for your iPad or if you're using the app on a Mac. But that doesn't stop me from trying. What's more interesting about the text boxes in Liquid Text is the AI feature. It is still in beta, which feels like just a disclaimer to jump ship if all this goes down the drain. I mean, why charge for a beta feature? Why is it available for all users, even those of us who are not testing the app? So it's actually not a beta, but okay. It's shocking the things that AI has just completely disregarded in the tech industry and still charge so much money. Using it, of course, means giving ChatGPT access to your documents in the app, which is not a problem if there is nothing confidential in them. For now, you have to index the documents and even choose which ones get indexed, and we really appreciate that control and hope that it stays. The tool will help you find information in your document faster, so now you don't have to read or study your PDF documents anymore. At least that's the concept. It is difficult to evaluate how accurate it is without reading the document yourself, which is kind of funny. Of course, the hope is that someday you won't have to check the work and then it will be worth it. Eventually, it will save you some time. Let us know if you found the AI in liquid text useful. The auto-linking feature can be quite helpful because references are not fun to create and that is something I don't mind AI taking care of, especially because you can always choose something else if it gets it wrong. AI will cost you more though. The free credits in the app go a long way in giving you a very good feel of whether or not it's a feature you should pay for. We really like that. The pen tool in Liquid Text is very good, one of the best you will find on the iPad, even better than some pens in handwriting note taking apps. It doesn't look like it though, judging by the few thickness options and limited colors. But we do have the most basic colors, so chances are you won't miss customizing your colors in the app. Being a PDF reader kind of takes off the pressure for custom colors. The pen tool also works on the PDF directly. 
but why try to squeeze some notes on it when you have a whole empty infinite canvas? The straight tool can be used for underlining notes, which liquid text doesn't have for your annotations, so the pen tool is a decent workaround for that if you like underlining your PDFs. You also get a highlighter if you prefer handwriting your highlights. It's easier and faster to use than the one for text annotations. On the PDF, it looks great, but not as much on the writing canvas. It goes above your ink, but it just doesn't look right. I mean, the yellow highlight doesn't even look yellow at all. And it's not because of the background color of the page or anything. It looks weird, even on white paper. The eraser tool erases per pixel and only works on handwritten annotations. It would be great if it also worked on text annotations, especially on the highlighter. But that is probably asking for too much. It's not like it's difficult to erase or anything. In addition to text and handwritten annotations, you can extract information from your PDFs to the workspace in Liquid Text. If you want to edit the extractions, you have to use the text annotation tool. You can change the color of your extraction, resize, and change the font color. You can even tag it. I love how easy it is to do this in Liquid Text. It's probably what inspired the name of the app. But if you want screenshot-like extractions that you can't interact with in any way, then the pen tool is all you need. This even works on scanned documents that you OCR are in the app. We love that you can edit the text in the extractions that you get from scans and images. What else would you ask for? In 2024, we shouldn't struggle to annotate our scans and images considering how well markup for iPad does that now. So it would be ridiculous if a PDF reader doesn't support the feature. Liquid text is no problem there. Now you have your text and handwritten annotations, extractions, and notes on the canvas. How do you make sense of all of it? This is one of the many reasons I love Liquid Text. Everything you extract from the PDF links back to it. You can also create links between ideas using the pen tool, and every object on your canvas has a unique link that you can copy and paste anywhere, even in Apple Notes. This works between projects, different canvases, different apps. I love this because sometimes I want to understand information by considering its context. It's perfect for investigation and research, and of course, study. If any of you guys use Liquid Text for other reasons that I haven't mentioned, please let me know. You can search through your documents or workspace at a time. We should be able to search everything in the project though. It will just save us the time would waste trying to figure out whether or not what we're looking for is in a document or workspace. Your search results for documents are easier to navigate, especially when you pinch them together. On the canvas, comments, excerpts, and text boxes with your search term pop out against a dark background. I love it. They're easy to spot, but not that easy to navigate for a massive canvas. PDF readers don't search through your handwritten annotations. It is a shame. Perhaps that is where you might want to use tags because the app can search through those. The developers have put a lot of effort into organizing the different elements of your project, starting from your notes. You have tags for both documents and workspace, as well as comments and even extractions. The only problem I have with tags in Liquid Text is that they're not universal. So they change with every project, meaning you have to create new tags each time you're working on something new. That is repetitive and too much work for a digital workflow. Another issue I have with tags is that they have categories, which seem to be an organizational layer. but Except for simply existing, they do nothing to improve how we work in the app. Inside your project, you can group your documents into folders and even nest those folders. 
folders are never a bad idea. I've personally never used them though because there's so many other ways to organize your notes. You can bookmark pages in your PDF and if they have outlines, the app can recognize them. With how everything can link to each other, we're not concerned about not adding pages to the outline. It will just be redundant. Liquitex can replace documents in your project when there's a new edition. This is refreshing because you can update your documents without needing to delete the old one, which is usually the setup you have in a lot of apps. The last way Liquitex organizes your documents is by letting you name them with information about publication, issue, volume, etc. Your workspaces don't need any organization, but we love that you can nest them. Where before we could only use one topic per project, now we can have as many topics as we want in a single project using the same documents. If that is not fantastic, I don't know what is. On the home page, your projects can stand freely or you can put them inside folders. Projects also need to be organized, right? It's easy to understand and navigate the home page. The developers have kept it simple and functional. We now have a recycle bin that appears and disappears depending on whether or not it has any contents in it. A recycle bin is a must-have for any productivity app, so we're happy to see it. Exporting notes out of liquid text is tedious and requires meticulous planning. No kidding. As a general rule, documents reviewed in any app best stay in that app. And for liquid text, this is more true than it is in most apps. However, we still do need the option for those special occasions when we must share our work. In liquid text, you can share a liquid text file that remains editable when imported back into the app. You can also choose to share only your annotations and even determine how they look. PDFs you export out of the app have a lot of options that take some time to understand, but when you do take the time to learn them, they give you some impressive capabilities. And let's just say that exporting in liquid text must be intentional, starting from the moment you create a new project and spanning the entirety of it. By far my favorite is the ability to send back annotations to the original PDF that usually resides somewhere in a cloud storage. It's slowly becoming an industry standard amongst PDF editors. Liquitex is a formidable research tool that keeps improving every year. The syncing issues we've had before seem to have been resolved and we're happy to see that. I haven't had an incident in months and all my syncing attempts are fast and without error. The redo icon seems impossible to get in the app, so perhaps I should give up on that one. Overall, Liquitex has improved dramatically. It's more stable, or am I just not using it intensively enough? Are you facing any issues that we've had in the past in 2024? Let me know if Liquitex is an app that you'd like to try. What you like about it? What don't you like about it? Do tell.